All right, ladies and gentlemen, right now I'm going to be reading Bella, pages 25 to 31. Um, I'm going to start at the line that says, what's a strike? It's the first complete paragraph at the top of the page, and you guys should be following along with your eyes. Remember, you should not just be listening to this. What's a strike? Bella asked. But in the hubbub, nobody seemed to hear her. Bella let the crowd carry her into the elevator out of the building. On the sidewalk below, she resisted the urge to bend down and kiss the ground. Oh, thank you, God. I was so high up in the sky, but I made it back down safely. The sidewalk wasn't exactly ground anyway. Not dirt, but pavement. The rest of the workers scattered, but Bella leaned against the building, waiting for Pietro. He appeared around the corner, his dark hair curling at his temples, his dark eyes flashing, his lips pursed into an O. He was whistling. Bella forgot her aching back, neck, head, and hands. She forgot the throbbing blister on her thumb. She forgot her empty stomach. Does whistling mean he's happy to see me? She wondered. Did Signor Carlotti say to come back on Monday? Pietro asked. Bella had forgotten Signor Carlotti too. He didn't really say anything at the end of the day, Bella said. She decided not to mention how much he'd yell at her all day long, how much he'd yell at her all day long. Everyone just stood up to go. It was very dramatic. All the workers rushed out at once, laughing and shouting. They kept saying, strike, strike, and a bunch of other words I, I couldn't figure it out. But that one word they kept saying, strike, what does that mean? Pietro instantly turned three shades paler. Oh, Madonna Mia, he cried. Oh, San Antonio. Bella wasn't sure if he was praying or swearing. Are you sure that was what they were saying? He asked. And you stood up and walked out with all the people yelling strike. Everybody did, Bella said defensively. But she wasn't so sure of that now. Her memory seemed to be a, a bit trick to be a tricky thing. Had Signor Carlotti still been standing there, still sputtering and screaming about unfinished shirtwaists, uncut threads? I think everybody did, she added. Oh, for the love of God, Pietro said. You just lost your job. But why? Bella said. I worked so hard. But a strike, see. That's when workers walk out because they want to get paid more or treated better, better or something like that. And usually what happens is they just all get fired and the company hires somebody else who isn't so picky. I didn't say I was doing a strike, Bella argued. But you walked out, Pietro said. You walked out with all the strikers. Think about how it must have looked to Signor Carlotti. Bella felt her knees crumble. She lurched toward the ground and would have fallen hard if Pietro hadn't grabbed her. I didn't mean it, Bella whimpered. I didn't know. Pietro looked down at her with utter contempt. He had his arms around her, but it was completely wrong. Bella jerked away from him. I'll find Signor Carlotti, she said. I'll tell him I'm not making this strike. I'll tell him I'll work all night if I have to. She whirled back toward the door. But now there was a huge man in an official looking uniform standing there. He held his arms out to bar the door and said something incomprehensible. Oh, please, Bella begged. You've got to let me in. The man was shaking his head, pushing Bella away. She landed sprawled on the ground. The other people on the sidewalk had to walk around her. Stop it, Pietro said, pulling her up. Senor Carlotti's probably already gone anyway. I'll go find him myself. I'll take you home and then I'll talk to him. It's not like he'd listen to a girl. Heartsick, Bella trudged along behind Pietro. The jabs and jostling of the crowd seemed like a fit punishment. The faces leered around her. The foreign jabbering hurt her ears. For all she knew, the entire crowd was laughing at her. What did you expect, you foolish girl? You're just an ignorant peasant. You don't belong here. Go home. Go starve. We don't care. At the Luciano's, Pietro let her in the door. I'll be back as soon as I can, he said. And then he was gone. Bella stumbled on into the apartment. Signor Luciano and her dirty children were clustered around the table, their hands flying through the bits and pieces of artificial flowers. 
Bella remembered Signora Luciano's prediction from the night before. You'll watch out. She'll end up on the streets. And that made it so that Bella couldn't even look at Signora Luciano, couldn't squeeze out the barest of greetings. Well, there's the grand working girl, Signora Luciano snorted. Too good for our business, of course. Has to work in a factory. Tears stung in Bella's eyes, but she wasn't going to let Signora Luciano see her cry. She tried to brush past the table to go into the other room, but Signora Luciano slapped her hand away from the doorknob. Oh, no, you're not going in there. Our day boarders are sleeping. Day boarders? Bella repeated, certain she'd heard wrong. Mario and Antonio work nights, Signora Luciano said, so they use Pietro and Nico's bed in the daytime. Bella closed her eyes weakly. What kind of place had she come to? It had seemed so simple back home. She had to go to America to find work or else her family would starve, period. But this was too much to think about. Day boarders and night boarders, crowded streets, fire escapes, sewing machines, strikes. Oh, don't pull that high and mighty act on me, young lady, Signora Luciano snapped. You're no better than us. I bet back home your family slept with goats and chickens in the house. They had, actually back when they still had goats and chickens. Pretty much everyone did. Animals on one side of the room, people on the other. Although Julia was awful about toddling over in the middle of the night and curling up beside a goat for warmth. She'd cried so hard when the last one died. Why did Signora Luciano make it sound like it was something to be ashamed of, owning animals? Bella wished that they'd had hundreds of goats and chickens. Hundreds of goats and chickens and acres and acres of land for growing beans and wheat. Because then Bella could have just stayed home. Bella leaned back against the wall because there was nowhere to sit. Signora Luciano was still talking, but it was harder and harder to make sense of her strange accent. One of the children said something and Bella couldn't understand him at all. And then Bella must have fallen asleep standing up because the next thing Bella knew, Pietro was shaking her awake. Bella stared at him in confusion for a moment. Who was this handsome man touching her? Then she remembered and burst out, did you find Signor Carlotti? Did you talk to him? Did, shh, Pietro said, not here. He led her through the back room and strangely out the window. Oh, Bella exclaimed, because now they were standing on a metal landing. The fire escaped. They were back at the back of the building looking out onto a tiny courtyard and the fire escapes of the buildings behind them. Ropes hung between the buildings and clothing hung from all the ropes, draped over and attached with wooden pins. Do people here have so many clothes they have to store everything outside? Bella wondered. But then one of the shirts on the line flapped droplets of water onto Bella's face and she realized, no, it's laundry, drying on the ropes instead of on the rocks along the river. In spite of herself, Bella found this enchanting. The Luciano's apartment was on the second floor of a five-story building, so she could look up into, the, into three more rows of hanging laundry. It looks like angels, she thought. Angels fluttering down from the sky. You still have a job, Pietro said. This was news that only angels could have brought here. Perhaps Pietro was an angel too. Grazie, grazie, Madonna Mia, Bella murmured. Signor Carlotti says there aren't, isn't going to be a strike. People were just acting crazy, Pietro said. But if anything like that ever happens again, anybody starts talking about a strike, you just stay put. Strikes are nothing but trouble. I will, Bella said. I promise. She kept her head bowed meekly, feeling the last rays of the sunset on her head. The only thing is, Pietro continued, I had to bargain a little to talk Signor Carlotti into keeping you on. You have to prove that you're not a radical or an anarchist or anything like that. Bella didn't even know what those words meant. How do I prove that? She asked. You have to work four more days as a learner without pay. Bella gasped. The old Bella, the half wild child, uh, the half wild girl from Calia who'd slept in the same room with goats and chickens wanted to reach out and slap Pietro. Maybe Signor Carlotti, too, for good measure. But that's not fair, she wanted to scream. That's cheating. How can they expect me to work for nothing? 
How is that any better than working for Signora Luciano? That she says she'll pay. Why is my work, why is my worth so little that I'm supposed to give it away for four more days? Four more days that mama and the little ones will go without eating. But see, then they'll pay you, Pietro said quickly, for Friday and Saturday next week. You'll get two days pay. He was begging her not to scream. He was telling her with his dark eyes, this is a scary place, America. You have to go along with what you're told. I can only protect you so much. And then you'll send everything I earn to mama? Bella asked tentatively. You'll have to keep some money out for the rent and to pay back the padrone for your steamer ticket. But then, yes, everything else, Pietro said. I'm sorry, Bella. If I weren't sending money back to my own mama, I'd... I know, Bella said. She looked up again, wanting one more vision of angels. But the sky was dark now. The sun had dipped out of sight. And the hanging laundry was just dim shadows in the dark light, in the dark night. Oh, mama across the ocean, she thought. Go out into the field and find a few more grains of wheat. Look in the garden and see if there isn't one more shriveled tomato hiding in the dried up leaves. I'm doing all I can, but you'll have to wait. Oh, please, mama. I hope you can wait. And we're ending on page 31.